Howdy y'all, Mr. Kazi coming to you from beautiful Atascacita, Texas, and today's homework helper is going to be on ionic formulas, how to write them and how to recognize them. You'll need a periodic table, you're going to need a polyatomic ion chart, and I'm going to make a few assumptions. First, I'm going to assume that you know the periodic table. Then I'm going to assume that you understand polyatomic ions. I'm going to assume that you know the rules for ionic compounds. And I'm going to assume you understand the formula anatomy. And if you don't understand all of these or you're not sure about them, then go to my channel and watch the videos dealing with these subjects. All right, the problem. Write formulas for the following. Calcium oxide, lithium hydroxide, sodium sulfide, tin 2 phosphate, and ammonia nitrate. Now one of the first things I do is I realize that all of those are ionic compounds. And the general rule is to place the more metallic element first and the less metallic element second. And then I must always make sure that the charges in an ionic compound balance to zero. All right. Ionic compounds. Let's go to the magic blackboard. Calcium oxide. Calcium is a plus two. I find calcium and I note that calcium is a plus two. And of course, all of your alkaline earth metals are going to be a positive two charge. And then I have oxide and that's a negative two. I combine them and I get zero. Therefore, they're balanced. And there it is, calcium oxide. Now let's look at lithium hydroxide. Lithium is Li, that's a plus one, as all the alkali metals are. OH, which is negative one. I looked that up on my polyatomic ion sheet, and I add those together, and I get zero, which means they are balanced. So again, there's the formula for lithium hydroxide. Sodium sulfide, sodium is Na, and that's a plus one. And S, which is a negative two. And when I combine those, I get a negative one. Now remember the rule is they, they need to be algebraically zero. And it's not. So it's not balanced. So what can I do? Well, I'll just add another uh, sodium uh, ion. And so now I've got a plus two. And a plus two and a negative two is zero. And that's balanced. If you're not sure what went on there. Rewind and watch it again. Now for tin 2 phosphate. I know that's going to be SN, 2 plus. Now I know it's 2 plus because of the Roman numeral 2. That tells me that the charge is 2 and it's always positive. Metals are positive. When we put those numbers in the parentheses, that's a positive 2 charge. Those are for cations. And you can also find these on your polyatomic ion cheat sheet. There's a list of common metal ions or cations. And PO4, I know is negative 3. I get that from the polyatomic ion cheat sheet. But see, when we add those together, we get negative 1. And that's not balanced. So what can I do here? Well, I need to find the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3. And that would be, of course, 6. And so then what would I do to 2 to get 6? I would multiply by 3. And what would I do to 3 to get 6? I would multiply by 2. And notice now, that's going to give me 0 and it's balanced. And I want you to note that I use parentheses there around the uh, phosphate ion because phosphate acts as a unit and we want 2 phosphates, not just 2 phosphorus and not 2 oxygen. We want 2 phosphates. Here is a common mistake. People will use parentheses around elements. You only need to use parentheses around polyatomic ions. All right? Ammonium nitrate. Now what's really cool about that is this is two polyatomic ions. So NH4 is plus one. NO3 is negative one. If I add them together, of course I get zero and that makes them balanced. Isn't that so cool? Recap, you used your periodic table, you used your polyatomic ion cheat sheet, and you wrote your ionic formulas. 
All right, as usual, if you have any questions, send an email to Mr. Kazi at mrkazi.com. Check out Mr. Kazi's world.com or mrkazi.com. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Happy Island.